Thank you for joining us today for the virtual Sunday service with the Center for Creative Living. CCL, a charter of the Universal Church of the Master, has served and supported the spiritual needs of its community here in the Bay Area for over 20 years. Good morning, good morning, and welcome. Good morning, Daddy. Good morning, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. smiling faces. Thank you so very much for coming. Uh, a big announcement. I think you all have received invitations to my birthday party, which is next Saturday, in a beautiful little town of Coralitas. And we're going to have a band. Uh, we're going to have a taco bar. We're going to have games and crafts. So it's going to be quite an exciting adventure. If anybody is interested and they haven't notified me before this, I have instructions on how to get there. And Coralitas is a beautiful little town. If any of you are interested in Italian sausage, it has the Coralitas market at some of the best sausage in the on the planet, I think, and uh, that's what they say. And so it's going to be an amazing adventure. Uh, one of the members of our band used to play for the Beach Boys, so it's going to be great. And they're going to play 50s and 60s music. So we're going to—it's going to be quite an event. No alcohol, please. Um, and what time? And it goes from one. And, and I'm sorry, it goes from two, two until two uh, five. five. Two until five. Okay. Uh, the um, other thing that I want to talk about is that we have uh, our wonderful uh, Reverend Ann here. She's going to be moving, and we are so excited about being here with her. And we don't know yet whether she's going to be able to make it next Sunday or not. So, uh, it, it, after driving people over to the party on Saturday and everything else, she's going to move. So, if you want to talk to her or wish her congratulations or whatever, uh, we're having a luncheon today for her at the 4th Street Bowl. Uh, if you want to go, let me know. Right now we're full, uh, but just if you uh, if, if you haven't told me about it, then I haven't put your name down, and we, we're at 32 people. So we, if you want to, uh, just you know, come and meet us at the 4th Street Bowl. Okay, that's all I can say. You know, should know where that is. It's on 4th Street. <laughs> it's really good today. <laughs> between Gish and Skyport. What? Between Gish and Skyport. Uh, between Gish and Skyport. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Uh, things are moving so fast. I don't know if you have noticed that everything seems to be moving and picking up speed. It's amazing. So if you get to that point where you feel like it's too much, just calm down. You don't have to do everything, unless you're courtly, and then you do. <laughs> yes. Right now we're planning for the silent auction for the conference, which is going to be on the 10th of September. And uh, so if any of you have something you would like to donate that's brand new, and you'd like to donate it to the silent auction, let me know. Can I, can I donate art? Yeah. Yes, you can donate art. Right? Yes, yes, something you've made. Perfect. Mary. I love you. You can Mary. donate by coming. You can donate by coming. I'll be well, I'm, so uh, Before we go any further, I'd like to introduce the president of the Universal Church of the Master because she opened her mouth. <laughs> 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 I'm not president, Cory. Yeah, you can the microphone and you have to squeeze in between my knees, okay? I squeeze well. Okay. I actually squeeze on the other side, it's easier for the So everybody, uh, our conference and our conference chair is actually our speaker today, but we're not going to bother her right now. So our conference, is, this is our first time back uh, since uh, COVID, so we are welcoming people back. We are, if you want to wear a mask, please do, so do not, do not. You know, uh, worry about what we say. You worry about taking care of yourself, and this is true about everybody. It's also on Zoom for those of you who choose not to physically appear. And so we have a lot of good things lined up. Uh, our keynote speaker this year is Reverend Dr. Jalusic and his wife uh, Michelle. Um, I think we'll look forward to their speak. Uh, it's about uh, their time in Mexico, and a lot of you know he was sick at that time period. Uh, then we have a wonderful workshop in the afternoon uh, with our Reverend. And Tom Gary and uh, Dr. Janet Child, Reverend yes. Dr. Janet Child, <laughs> yes. and uh, Reverend Chris, uh, not Chris, I'm sorry, Joyce Brown, who is also a newborn member. So 
See what happens when you put me on the spot like this? I'm not prepared. I'm prepared. <laughs> you're doing better than when you're prepared. <laughs> I think you're doing oh, wait great. a minute. Was that a good thing or not? <laughs> I'm, I'm not preparing for the, uh, September 11th. Uh, September 11th, I will be speaking here, so I guess I'm not preparing because Daddy, Daddy says I do better now. Well, it's contemporaneous. Your, your humor comes through. Yes, like I like it when my humor comes through. Uh, I like to have a good time, and sometimes people don't let me, but it's, oh well, that's their problem. <laughs> Mine is to have a good time. So, anyways, if you want a good time, jo join us at the conference. Please go on uh, line to u-c-m.org, uh, and there's a, uh, information about the conference, and you can register there as well. So, thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I want to start out with a birthday we know is coming up tomorrow. Uh, so, would you please come up and choose your beads, Eileen? Yay! Uh -huh. Yay. Yay. Green is my favorite. Ooh! Ooh! Ooh. Ooh. Hey, she should get them both. Uh, yeah. That looks like something an actress would wear. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and any other birthdays coming up this coming week? Anybody else have a birthday? Well, then uh, let's. Uh, we're going to sing our very special song. Already. This is your song. It is very long. years and years ago and nobody had ever heard it and now I find that I go to different events and they're singing it it's like it just spread okay. we share it wherever yeah. we can yeah. Yeah. Every, every, yeah. share it everywhere you can because people just look at you like is that it <laughs> I, I can do that I, you can do that okay that, that sounds great for those of you, this is your first time here, you probably wonder, do we always start out like this? And what's the answer? Yes, yes we do. We're so glad you're here. We really enjoy having you here, and especially Rosalie. Hello, Rosalie. Hi. Well, we're back then. She's the youngest member of CCL. Uh, yeah, I'm going to throw one kiss to you, Mia. <laughs> and uh, I just invited her to our, our party next Saturday. She will be there. Uh, one of the reasons I'm so excited is my great grandchildren are going to be there, and they're three and five. Aww. And uh, a friend of ours uh, is bringing a, a, a young lady who's eight. And uh, I was hoping we could Rosalie would come and be there. So there's going to be some kids there. Which I love it when you have kids at a party. And that's another reason I'm saying. No alcohol. I think adults don't have to uh, be acting like kids, okay? So, <laughs> you can act like kids without alcohol. You can act like kids without alcohol. That feels better. Okay, thank you. And uh, the other thing is that when I talk about the UCM conference, I, I want to please invite you to attend because we have some of the most amazing things in the silent auction. They, uh, a friend of ours donated lots of things that are unusual, and uh, I like uh, unusual things. And my son has just won some awards on his photography, and he's bringing some pictures to put into the auction. Uh, so there's going to be, and there's a lot of different elements to the auction this year. So please uh, uh, come. And listening to Reverend uh, Jelicic is going to be exciting. I can't imagine having COVID in a, in a foreign country and not being able to understand what people are saying to you and being in a coma. So please, we want to we want to support him and let him know we're glad you, we're glad he made it. And glad that his wife was able to uh, make it too, being in a foreign country and not speaking the language. There are so many things that are happening right now, as I mentioned before. Please find your center. I have, I, you know, I'm still doing readings by phone. And last week I had six people that I did readings on that were so depressed. And I think you should notice that. When you talk to somebody, if their energy is so low, just say, do you need a hug? A lot of people living alone have not had hugs. And then I would say, hi, you know, my name's so-and-so. Can I help you with something? 
but be there for people. We just isolate it so long and we forget there's people who live by themselves that they, they haven't gotten any conversation at all. A friend of mine came to visit from uh, Louisiana and she said, the first thing I want is hugs. Okay, and so uh, we were delighted to encourage her in that. It was fun to uh, get hugs. And so just think of that. What is it you can do to make another person feel better when they're depressed? And quite often just human touch is, is what does it. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Welcome. We're going to have a meditation, and what I'd like for you all to do is put your feet flat on the floor. And close your eyes. Take a nice deep breath. And I want to take you into a, a wonderful, wonderful forest. I love the trees. And this is a forest of trees of any kind. Visualize the trees all around you. They may be evergreens, and you're in a forest of Christmas trees. They may be redwoods, and you're in a forest of sequoia giants. They may be trees of maple, and you can smell the maple syrup. Put yourself in a forest of trees that you identify with. And as you're standing there in this forest, Feel your feet go down, down into the ground. And then feel the sun shining on your head. Root yourself like a tree. And feel your energy coming up from Mother Earth. And that energy is going up your body, through your head up to source. Ah. And then bring that energy back from source, back from the Creator, and down through your head and through your body, down into the land. You are one of the most beautiful beings on the planet. Don't ever doubt your greatness, your energy, your communication your sincerity, and I don't ever doubt that you're anything but perfect. Just like the trees, they stand tall. I love the fact that we have birds in our trees. I can hear that chirping. Feel that. What's it feel like to be a tree here? Feel the fluttering of wings and being able to see the new birth is the bird's eggs open. Just feel the energy. New life beginning. New twigs sprouting. New growth all around. And you are in the center of it. And as you feel that energy, you realize that you stand here in your own two feet rooted to the earth, but you also reach out to source. And like the redwoods, you are connected with all that are around. And luckily you can move when you want. Just think of yourself as a little tree today. Strong, listening, Excited about life and new growth. And carry that excitement and that joy with you for the rest of the day. Knowing that wherever you go, Creator is with you. When you're ready, come back. Come back to your, you sit on your chair. And take a nice deep breath. When you're ready, open your eyes. Thank you for being, I love the birdies. Did you notice the water? I did, I kind of, the water was kind of subdued, but that was, that was wonderful. Thank you so very much. Yeah. We have
have so many things going on. And I am very excited. Thank you. I'm very excited about our, our speaker today because uh, the Reverend Mary Gary is one of the first people I met at UCM uh, when I went to their house, Tom and Mary Gary in Santa Clara, and I met them. This has been a long, long time ago. And so just know that when you meet people, don't forget them. Don't let them go. You know, I've known Lonnie for years, and all of a sudden she disappeared, and then she came back again. And it was like, yay! And you know, and the, the faces here, like Annie, uh, I, I, I keep saying I know you over 30 years. I don't know if that's true or not. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and so think about that. Jan Ewers, I've known for so long. Uh, when you know somebody for that long, Corky, I've known for 40 years. And I, yeah, and when I said, yeah, I know money, longer than I know I'm quirky. <laughs> and it's like, wow. So think of that. Think of reaching out to those people that you haven't talked to because you were thinking about what's happening with me. Reach out. As I said to you, and I'm going to say this every Sunday because for me it works. Every day I call four people. And they're not always the same four people. They might be people I haven't talked to in years. They might be people across the world. But reach out. Don't wait for people to contact you. I have a person I talked to yesterday, and she says, I only really have one friend, and I just found out she's dying. And I said, why haven't you talked to somebody else? She said, nobody wants to talk to me. And I said, I do. Call me. So if any of you feel like you're alone, you don't have anybody to talk to, call Donnie. You'll see it on the side of taxi cabs. Hang on. Call Donnie. 1-800-CALL Donnie. Yeah, 1-800-CALL Donnie. Thank you, Regina. So now, the person we're going to call today is Reverend Mary. She's going to come up here and wow us with her talk. Okay? And, Mary, you've got a clock right here. So, Mary, when you come up here, yes, you can see the clock. Uh, so I didn't put it up there where neither of us can see it. Right. It's right here, and you've got until 10 till. Yeah. Okay. That's a half an hour. Okay. She has to get dressed. We just don't. <laughs> I have to get dressed, is right. Okay. <laughs> neither time or I could get the lid off. So we had to bring the box for Corey to get the lid off so I could get my stroll out. I can't think of a better removing the lid for the Okay. Now, I'm happy to give five minutes to um, Chris. Chris. Is that okay? So I'll stop. No, I think that's what I was saying. Let's go over a little bit. They don't kick us out. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, hello there. <laughs> uh, there's some faces I haven't uh, seen in a while. Some faces I don't know. Some faces I've been married to for 50 years. <laughs> That's a nice face, you know. Get a test. And, um, I used to be able to sing a song and walk among the people when I sang the song. And I can't do that now because if I sing something that's that's um, copyright, copyrighted, copyrighted. Thank you. That's one of those big words. You know, um, I know. Stay by the mic. Uh, <laughs> if I sing something that have us all sing something that's copyrighted, then we get letters saying you can't do that. You know, blah blah blah. So, but I need your energy today, as you could see by the pell-mell way we flew into the room. Um, we've been, I, I've had um, my mind full of this talk. I was supposed to talk on Eastern religion. Ta-da! And I am going to talk on Eastern religion, but as I worked and I prayed and I said, how is this going to come out? They said, go back, go back, go back. So it took me a while to figure out whether they just wanted me to go to the deck or whether they wanted me to uh, 
go back in history or what what back did, does um, and did they want? And as it go back in history beyond organized religion, go back in history to when people were just clustering, when people were evolving, when people were becoming people. Can I add something here, Mary, right now? Because let's get the energy up for you. And what the people did then, they didn't know how to read, they didn't know how to write, but they could make noise. So let's all make noise for marriage. Yay! So, I think that we're tribal. Yes, I think we're tribal, yes. <laughs> and I think that we choose our tribes. Yes, we do. What a smiling, loving face. <laughs> yeah, yours. <laughs> um, so, but how did we, how did, Religion come out of all of that tribalness. How did that all happen? What happened to us? Rules. And I think one of the first things that happened to us is we were becoming tribal. You know, things were, I think we can safely call them challenging in those days. If you wanted to have dinner, you didn't call, um, <laughs> yeah, and have them deliver. You know, you sent the hunters out with a, homemade spear to find something smaller than they were that couldn't run as fast as and then I came home and you cooked dinner over the fire you had just learned to manage. So things were very different and people began to cluster. Initially they clustered in families that made perfect sense and then as their families began to marry you have in-laws I have in-laws, and they could come to dinner. That was okay. I was lucky. I always have wonderful people that came into my life. And they that happened in our communities then. And so then you had outside people coming to people that were an established family, and pretty soon those outside people had people. And the next thing you know, you had a tribe. And what I mean is a tribe? A tribe is people who think similarly, have a similar purpose. In those days, a tribe was to survive. Because uh, if you remember the talk of uh, uh, Native American history that says if you behaved badly and got put outside the tribe, I mean, things didn't go so well for you then. And so you understand that that must have been a little peek at what it was like in the very early days. But I think in the very early days, we began to understand that there was something else, not just us and our tribe. Things sometimes seemed to be inspired. Things sometimes, when you would wish, and you would wish hard, things sometimes came your way. And we now wish really hard and call that prayer. <laughs> they probably didn't call it prayer then, but my guess is the divine thought it was prayer, and they responded to it. And so as people began to become more comfortable with a concept that, as our friend Nancy Witt used to say, I don't know how many people remember Nancy Witt, but she used to say, there's something bigger than Phil, you know, let's, let's uh, get in line here, there's something bigger than Phil. And uh, something bigger than Phil developed the name, depending upon where you were. Some people called him God. Some people called him him. Now we call him her, or we call him um, uh, neutral, or we call him source. We call him we, being Mr. Fifty, your partner, and I. We call him source. But you you develop an, um, a thought about a connection to. A, an element that's beyond your immediate touch. Not your reach, just your touch. Good solid wood table. Good solid man, husband, touchable. 
And uh, so, as that happened, people came to the conclusion that this force was bigger than they were. That's okay. But then, if the force is bigger than you are, people began very quickly to think you either want that force to love you or you have to placate it. Because in my push back to the early times studies, I thought, what? why on earth do people develop sacrifices? And um, earlier religions, a lot of people had human sacrifices. I mean, I was appalled. Easy to be appalled. I live in Willow Glen. I have a wonderful husband. I call Uber for my food. I have a different life. There, they made decisions based on limited knowledge. There wasn't even a printing press so that everybody knew the same thing. You had to kind of figure it out in the tribe. You could pass that information around. And if it stayed with you and it made sense and you could stay in the tribe, it was all okay. And that's what a lot of people did. <laughs> God, it's just the sweetest thing. <laughs> and, um, Mary, you have to stop flirting and go on to your talking. <laughs> We're not flirting. We're just connecting, aren't we? Yes. Um, so I think sacrifice developed because people didn't know how to relate to a God source. They were afraid, and so they made sacrifices to the God source. Now, as those sacrifices grew, our humanity, I'll say expanded. I don't know that I want to say it grew, but our humanity expanded. And people who were um, in charge, there's always somebody in charge somewhere. And um, <laughs> then, then those people did things to have more power over the group. They told them when to get back on track, you know, that kind of stuff. And so those people realize that sacrificing could give them a lot of power. And if they weren't all together loving, like um, this one is, they would do something to frighten the people into obedience. You know, sometimes when mother was having a bad day, she'd say to you, if you don't stop that, you know, well, first of all, if your father would come home and whack you, and then secondly, uh, whatever thing they had to control you by saying something bad will happen. That's, that's um, innate, just like tribalness is innate. I, you know, my, um, I, I not only went to my religious books, I'm obsessive when I, when I do these talks, so I probably have a dining table, which is the only table, covered with all these different books that were, you know, Jesus talks to Buddha, we'll get to that later. Buddha talks back. Um, but it, I used my science head. I was in science, I love science. I was a nurse first and you used some logical determinations before you. And science has uh, done so many analytical things that were of interest that say, when, um, when people come together, they can easily slip one way or another. They've either become altruistic, caring for other people, um, you know, loving how people develop, or they become, um, my tribe's better than your tribe, you know? Uh, so vote for my candidate. <laughs> We're getting, going through a little of that right now. And, um, so the, the, one of the scientific stories I read was about um, someone who said, how did we decide when humanity was moving forward in a positive way? And they asked this woman who was a scientist and a doctor <clears throat> how, how they could make that determination. And she said, I, uh, not to me, I bet. Uh, she, her words were, when you see fractures on an x-ray from people who have been dug up from years and years and years ago, 
if there is a healed fracture in someone's leg, we know humanity is evolving. And I said, could you, you know, read to the next paragraph here. She said, in the early days, if you broke your leg and you were by yourself, you couldn't get to the water hole. You couldn't fend off the animal who was coming for dinner and it was going to be you. You needed someone and probably more than one someone to take care of you until your leg healed. So if somebody was functioning with a healed fracture in their leg, then humanity was moving along. I thought that was not something I'd ever thought much about before. I always had esoteric, uh, God-inspired ideas, but that's a pretty much probably the truth. You know? So, now let's decided to move to religion. So what is religion? It's not just this searching that these people were doing. What religion is defined as is a set of organized beliefs and practices and systems that almost most often relate to the belief, this is good, for the worship of the controlling force. <laughs> Science is so wonderful. As a personal God or some other supernatural being, and, and um, well, this is a basic definition. There are many different understandings of what religion is, and not all are centered on a belief in a God, gods, or supernatural forces. But according to Pew's research, they say 84% of the world has some kind of religious affiliation. First of all, I don't know if I believe that. I, mean, I don't believe that 84% of the world has access to an organized structure uh, that we call religion, but they, that doesn't mean they don't have beliefs. That's a separate thing. You know, so. And it says it's not spirituality, that's not religion. And so what is, what is uh, psychology of religious belief? Now this is a scientist's opinion, so we can kind of put our tongue in cheek and not buy it all, but you know, it's worth, I think, considering. And they say that human brain works by predisposing people to believe. The human mind looks for patterns, purpose, and meaning, meaning which may influence why people turn to religion. Scientists always think you go there because you're too chicken to live in the world without it, but I think so. Um, then it talks about other, you know, if your parents were religious, you're likely to be religious. Uh, as human need to belong, again, they, they say over and over that uh, tribalness is innate in human beings. Just like the horses would run in a herd and, the, you know, animals tend to cluster, wolf packs and that sort of thing, that humans have that same need for socialization and connecting with others. So, okay, I go, I go for that. But this organized approach that was developed, develops with it what I think is one of the inherent risks, and in that is if an organization, the larger an organization, I guess which is why we love this organization a lot, because it doesn't try and be huge and across the world and uh, have a thousand buildings. But the more the organized religion accrues things, the more money has to be developed to manage the accrual and to continue to accrue, as in the basket gets passed twice. And, um, and then the people who were uh, running the religions in the, in the early days, um, there's something so dangerous about being absolutely sure you're right. You know, as soon as you're absolutely sure you're right, then you're pretty sure that he's wrong because he's not saying absolutely what you say. So you can believe that you're on the right path. You can believe that you're doing the right things, the right things. But if you think you're absolutely right, that you're not making any mistakes, mm, boy, I see that as a danger. I do. And... I think we forget, you know, this is the United States of America, 
So, you know, a lot of us think this is how the world is, almost, or wish they were. We went to Italy one time, and we arrived on a Sunday, and we were in a taxi taking us to work. Wherever, whatever we were going to see. And I said, oh, the streets are so quiet. I said, oh, yeah, it's Sunday. They're in church. And the taxi driver burst out laughing. He said, oh, my God, who would think that? Oh, he said, you're from America. I said, yeah, because nobody else thinks everybody goes to church on Sunday. And I said, oh, I didn't know why they should, you know. <laughs> But so, and we were formed because people came here to escape um, religious persecution. <laughs> I'm not looking at it. Uh, religious persecution, and um, um, and so the the protection of religious belief was very big in this country. So that that's just our innate exposure. That's kind of what the big tribe looked at. That's why we have. Um, Protection under the Constitution. So, let's look at religion. Huh? What were they doing on Sunday? Right. <laughs> <laughs> they were Italian. What do you think? Sleeping in, right? No, no. They were Italian. What do you think? <laughs> no. They were Italian. No. They're eating. Maybe they're drinking. <laughs> Occasionally, I've heard Italians might do that. But, they you know, I'm not. Oh, that. Okay. Let's look at, just briefly up here. Anybody wants the details of this information, just send me your, your I'll turn my outline page over and you write your email on and I'll send you whatever you think you want. I, my job was to, to look at Eastern and Western religion, look at, to differentiate for people between Eastern. And it was a good task. I, I, um, if I could do it in a two sentence summary, and then we could all um, go get food on the table. No, I won't do that. <laughs> Western religion is um, leader focused, God leader focused. They might call the God by a different name. They might frame it differently how you get them. But basically, it is a God centered um, re uh, religion, Western religions. Eastern religion. Some of them aren't even sure there's a quote God. I think they they just I don't want to say this. They their religions get colored by who they're dealing with that's not in the religion that's part of their life. So <clears throat> as they have dealt with Western religion a lot, they, they say, Well, we're not God centered like you are. I don't think that means they don't think there's something bigger outside, but they say their job here, and it's an interesting twist on what we probably in this room all think our job is, which is to be the best person you can. Figure out how you're going to be the best person you can. And that's what you do in an Eastern religion. Uh, the first one that was developed was the Hindu religion. And it was developed even before the first Western religion. The first Western religion, as we call it, um, uh, and how I'll refer to it for this talk, are the um, the religions that Abraham was the founder of: Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. Those are pretty much Western religions, and they uh, are religions because they are so God-centered. Um, they might not always agree, particularly Islam is not very patient with what it sees as Christianity's uh, presumption of right or something like that. <laughs> but Eastern religion, Hindu, was established first and then Buddhism followed um, 600 BC. That means it was uh, over 500 years before Christ was born for Christianity. Buddhism developed in the East, and it followed, um, it's the only person that in, in any Eastern um, discussions is referred to as a prophet, or is referred to as, now some people see Buddha as a God source, but Buddha didn't. If you read books by, about what Buddha said, Buddha said, no, no, I'm not 
a profit or not. This anybody can do this. And besides, I don't know anybody who has 37 years to sit under a tree <laughs> and wait for enlightenment. You know, it's just it's not 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 exactly a, a way home. So it's a different structure altogether. And it's a and in some ways it's a wonderful structure. I put the Tao, Tao say Tao Te Ching. And there aren't as many people who are part of the Tao, but the Tao is followed in this country a lot because it has practices that people have. It has very good meditative resources. It does that, what is it where you move around and Tai Chi. Chi. That, that's practiced heavily in the, in the Tao. Very different structure. But what we have to ask ourselves as we are moving forward is what is of value in religion? Because by the time you're to the stage where you're in this room, this is not the first thought anybody in this room has had of religion. You've thought about religion, you've thought about your life, you've thought about, uh, I can't help it, she cross over. We're <laughs> <laughs> just over the floor, guys. She. Those on Zoom wonder what the heck you're talking about. Right? <laughs> oh, um, for those of you on Zoom, there's a cutest little baby girl who runs around and goes behind a chair and waves at you and smiles and melts your heart so that you have a heart-centered toe. <laughs> <laughs> Rosalie. <laughs> okay. Um, you are at the place where you say to yourself, or you might consider saying to yourself, is this good for me? Is this what this religion is asking me to do? What this program is asking me to do? What this book that is written says I should do? You need to be asking, is this good for me? Because I believe, so therefore, <laughs> I don't believe that. I believe, you know, I tell you what I think and you do with it as you choose, as it works for you. But what I try to do in those circumstances is I say, hmm, is this taking me down the path? Will this help me to be a better person? Will this help me to be there for somebody when the phone rings? You know, I haven't always been that kind of a person. I think some of you have heard the story about when Tom and I were first married and the phone was on my side of the bed and the phone rang about 2.30 in the morning and somebody said, I don't think God loves me. I said, what? I don't think God loves me. I said, do I know you? I don't know, I, I, I just wanted to know. I said, well, of course God doesn't love you. God doesn't love anybody who calls a stranger. <laughs> my, my loving husband reached over and snatched the phone out of my hand. After this poor soul. <laughs> so I've had a lot of growing to do. In my relationship. But I believe that, one, you have to guard against thinking one more piece of information is the answer. Something has to resonate in here, and that's part of, you know, I don't think I'm the, uh, an improv speaker, but if I can't move your emotions enough for you to laugh and to feel the energy moving within yourself, then I haven't reached you, and I want to reach you, because I believe that if we can reach each other, if we can commit to wanting the best for each other, even if you know that person would never do at your table, because they would have different needs and different tastes and different everything, that doesn't mean you can't wish them well, as you wish yourself well. As Dottie was saying in her introductory talk, she always gives a piece because she's so intuitive. The fact is, take care of yourself. If you don't take care of yourself, I try and send a little email to people when I get out in the night and can't sleep. I can either pace around by stupid things that arrive from Amazon in two days, or I can, you know, try to do something positive. So I send a little note to somebody I haven't heard from in a while, just a little email that says, "Hi, I can't sleep, just was thinking about you, blah blah blah." 
I can't tell you how many people have come back to me and said, what a nice thing. I never expected to hear from you. I never thought anybody would think of me at two or nine. <laughs> so I, I just say, reach out as you can. Take care of yourself. There's nothing shameful in taking care of yourself first. If you're not healthy and whole and caring, you can't give. You're just tired. I know about that, too. I think developmental truth comes to stages. There's not some magic book or some magic talk or some magic anything where you can go to and, and the lights suddenly go on and you know everything. No. First of all, I think our body couldn't stand it. <laughs> I think we'd go, I don't know what we do. I don't think it would be good. Um, so always ask yourself, what do you need? What do you need or want from religion? And then be willing to give us different tenets. I also have details about each of the Eastern religions, which you've got kind of a short shot on today, and I'm happy to have you, again, just sign the name on the back, and I'll email you all the stuff I spent actually hours and hours gathering on each of the uh, Hindus and um, Buddhists and Tao Te Ching. I think, I think we're done. Well, thank you so much. <laughs> does, does Dottie think we're done? <laughs> I think Dottie does. I've, I've worked with Dottie long enough to know when the big hand reaches a 10, <laughs> sit down and be quiet. <laughs> person here who wanted to uh, say a prayer. Where did she go? There you are. Reverend Chris Brown uh, is going to t uh, come up with a prayer in Hebrew to remind us that Jesus was a Jew. What mm -hmm. so many people forget completely about mm -hmm. because that faith yeah. is one of the oldest ones. Mm -hmm. And this is what she's going to share as a prayer. I did not expect to invoke Jesus coming up here doing the Hebrew prayer. <laughs> <laughs> but isn't that what we're all about? That's what right. we're all about. And you have a microphone. Right? Thank you. Um, I'm super pleased to be here, and this is completely impromptu. Uh, and at the same time, it's very timely. And in the past, you may have heard me recite this prayer. It's called a mourner's cottage, and there have to be 10 people in the room to do it officially. So um, there's not 10 people in my house. Um, so I would love to come and deliver it here. And um, it's, it's the word mourner has to do with the fact that it's, it turns out that it's said when people die. But it, it's not about dying at all. It's um, about exalting the glory of God. And um, because it's so impromptu, I'm not going to give you the translation. If you want it, I can get it for you. And also to set the container, um, and any who is with me, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do the Shema to set the container. What that means is I'm, um, I'm proclaiming the oneness of God. So. Shema Yisrael. Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. Baruchem Kevot, Malachusot, Leolam Ba'eh. May his name be exalted forever and ever. Um, that's not the prayer, that's the proclamation for the campaign. You need to speak just a little bit louder. I will. Now I'm going to speak louder. Okay. Now, now I'm going to speak louder. And um, this is the prayer, and it, again, it's the exaltation of God in all of the ways that God is awesome and wonderful. Ikadar, Ikadash, Shomer Abach. Yama, 
Jazzy Ladies, um, where you can get everything gluten-free and made from scratch, and just everything is amazing. And um, I have found that there are a lot of people that uh, there's a lot of beautiful, beautiful parks in and near Eugene. There's so many places to go walking. There are um, I've, I've been looking at different, you know, spiritual places. Also, be coming on Zoom, you know, of course, what you know what I can, but also. Um, I found a center that's called 
it's called the heart of Eugene. Um, it's pretty new. They, they, they started it right before, um, or right at COVID time. Mm -hmm. And they have a lot of meditation and yoga and things, but they only have a service and music and things once a month, it seems like. And it's in the evening, so it doesn't take me away from this wonderful community and family. I'm growing my family. I am not leaving one family and starting a new one. I'm growing my family. I'm inclusive. Don't forget about me, folks. Oh, it's not that far away. And I'll love you and I'll miss you, you know, physically. But most certainly, my love is always here with you. And, you know, um, the same thing happened to you this next week, right? Um, <laughs> you know, there, there's been, it's just been an amazing journey. And so I, I love you all and thank you all for your support and your love through all of this. And I so look forward to being able to share wonderful things and send wonderful energy. Um, you know, by the way, the coast is only an hour away, so I still get to go to the beach. There's waterfalls close by. There's, you know, there's there's places to go that that you know I'm looking forward to. Actually, You're exploring not the Chamber of Commerce here. I'm not. I'm, not Oregon. I'm looking forward to exploring Oregon. For years, I've gone up there to go see my family, to drive from mom's house to sister's house to mom's house to brother's house, and now I get to explore. So it's pretty exciting. And thank you all for stopping in your car. <laughs> Well, as you know, when Ann leaves, we need another associate pastor. Ann has been our associate pastor for quite some time now. And uh, somebody said, well, they just have to get up and say something, don't they? I said, yeah, and help set up the altar and make sure. And I started listing all the things the associate pastor does. And she said, "I can I be the assistant associate pastor? <laughs> <laughs> but we have it. We have a position available, and we're passing the basket, and for those of you, if this is your first time, what I'd like for you to do is pick up your program that you got when you came in here, and on the back is the Sacrament of Giving. And I want you to well, read it with me, and it says, Giving to the ministry, from which I receive my spiritual support and nurturing, is an affirmation and consciousness of the truth. That spirit is a prospering power enriching every area of my life. Okay, and what's going to be happening is uh, we are meeting at the. Fourth Street Bowl. What? George, I wanted to speak about. I mean, the Fourth Street Bowl? Okay, uh, we're going to be meeting at 4th Street Bowl. Bowl. At once, you can go over there earlier, that's not going to be a problem. Okay, if you want to join us to wish uh, our wonderful Reverend Ann a, a, a safe journey. And now, um, April is uh, in charge of the prayers over here. And about once every three months, we do a prayer and bring the prayer. So tell us what we're going to do, April. Well, I know it's been a while. Um, well, we've had COVID, and yeah. we've had COVID, and we haven't done this since we've been on this location, but the prayers go in the bowl and they're not forgotten. We pray on them. Dottie really dedicates time every morning to praying for the prayers. But there's a time of completion and releasing. And so we take it very seriously. It's not just a piece of paper. It's energetic. And so I'll be bringing my cauldron next week and herbs. And we'll, after service, take all the prayers we've collected and put them in the cauldron and pray over them and release them. So you're invited to stay after next Sunday if you wish and participate in that ritual. What? Well, we can do it on the sidewalk. We'll check with Gabrielle what's what we can do. Okay. So I hope you'll participate. Thank you. And and and, and April represents her faith, which is a goddess. Mm -hmm. So uh, we've got a lot of different faiths being represented today. So thank I thank you so very much. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. And Annie, you want to lead us in a closing prayer? You never I'll know. Make it short. You never know. Don't sit in the front row. <laughs> I'll make it short. <laughs> this is
take a moment and close our eyes and take a nice deep breath in and let's breathe in all the loving energy that we've had today and give the beautiful talks and all the fun and Rosalie's energy and everything that we've got here. And as we hold in that wonderful energy and we feel that smile in our heart, we then let go and breathe out. And we let go of anything and everything that might be weighing on our minds and hearts right now. And as we breathe in again, we breathe in love. And then we breathe in all that, breathe out all that is not love. Dearest Creator, dearest Mother, Father God, thank you for this wonderful day and thank you for our lives. And thank you for this magical moment that we've had together. Whether we're in person or whether we are at distance from one another, our hearts reach out to one another and we are one. The magnificent message that really was brought to us by Mary is that really religion and spirituality is in our hearts. Creator, thank you for bringing that to us and bringing that truth to us, recognizing that we are all one and wherever we are, you always hold us and you always keep us strong. As we reach out today and as we look at everybody around us, make sure that we share our loving smiles. If you, can, if you are wearing a mask, then share the love in your eyes. It's okay to be whoever you are. Creator, thank you, thank you, thank you for this freedom and for this loving energy. And we go out now and have a beautiful, magnificent afternoon, a wonderful week, and a wonderful life. We give thanks again and again. Blessed be so it is and amen. Okay, on Zoom, we have uh, people are thanking Mary for this wonderful service, and we um, just want to know if she can donate. Uh, it's an option. Who does? Who's? Um, uh, Glenn and Chili. Uh, Mary. Chili. Um, uh, Chili. Patty and enjoys thank you. Hi, Joyce. Uh, he wants a copy of the, yes, of the, of the notes, and so does a couple of people like you. So does who? Uh, so she doesn't have, there are people that want copies of the notes. B. B. Who, who does? B. 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 Wants a copy of the notes? Yeah, and there's other people that you, that you probably don't have the, yeah. they're sending me their email address. Yeah. Okay. Good. Okay, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. We got Clarence and Gabrielle. Thank you. We can do the prayers. Yay! Oh, okay, okay, good. Good. Thank you so very much. And uh, thank you, David, for coming down from uh, up, up north. <laughs> We're glad to. Have and thank, uh, nice to meet you, Jared. Thank you so much for bringing him in. And uh, Jessica, thank you for joining us today. It was nice to have you here. And I, I want to say thank Jill for helping out and doing the candles and setting up the altar along with John. So many people. It takes a, it takes a village. Yes. <laughs> okay. Thank you, April, for helping uh, uh, Courtney set up in, in the morning. I, I, I love it. It's finally gotten to the place now that everything's set up and all we have to do is say, plug it in. And, and somebody forgets to plug it in. And then we go, hey there, baby, how are you? <laughs> and uh, Rosalie is that person who greets everybody with a smile. If we could all be like Rosalie. Absolutely. Yes, just exactly. That's what was, and Mary was, Mary was noticing is this smiling, smiling little girl who is uh, so happy to be here. Yeah, it's like, pick her up and we have this just. I think that's fine. Yeah, because people on Zoom can see who she is. Oh, yeah. That was oh. great. What a pretty girl. Oh, wow. Yes. Wow. Can, can, you, can you do kisses? Okay. I'm going to go down first. Oh, there we go. Thank you, Christina, for sharing us. That was great. <laughs> Thank you. Now they know who we're talking about. <laughs> now they know who we're talking about. And uh, if you wonder if church is like this every time, what's the answer? Yes. 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 An adorable from from the peanut gallery. An adorable <laughs> peanut gallery. The baby is so cute in all caps. And so, uh, if, if you can make it, we'll see you at Fourth Street Bowl at one. And don't rush. We have coffee back there. We have books to look at. We have food to pick up and new people to meet. So stick around. Bye now. Thank you everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.